See that chunk? It's no good. Give it a minute to chill out and then it does fine for a while. I think they'll work really well in all different types of tillage situations. We might end up with a whole set of them, who knows? All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. So we are farming today. We got nine tenths of rain, um, I don't know, last week sometimes. So we were out for a few days, dried off pretty nice. It was actually a really nice rain. We needed the moisture. It was just the right amount, perfect timing. I mean, we would have liked to got a little bit more done before the rain, but we needed it. So we're back in the field. I got a little bit of spraying to do. I had to pick up another box of seed beans. They are in the old black truck over there. Uh, when I get done spraying, we're gonna throw them in the air seeder because I was three acres short on my field. That little hiccup we had planting way too thick kind of cost us some seed and we ended up not having enough. So that's what we got going on. Dad's planting corn down the way. Let's get some stuff done. Let's see if this thing will start. It's been sitting for a while. business. So these are our new floater tires we bought for the sprayer. Two of them, these two are in pretty good shape. I'd say they're 60 70 percent the other two they're not quite as good but they'll be good enough for us we got a really good deal on them so we're probably not going to put them on this year actually i know we're not going to put them on this year just because it's pretty late in the game and we would just have to run over a very small amount of acres and then switch back to our row crop tires but we couldn't pass up the deal we'll put them on before fall i think we're going to do some more fall burn down now i need to get my climate field view drive an iPad out of the 8400 so I can get it in the sprayer. I don't know if I've ever really explained what climate is. Some people like it, a lot of people use it. Some people think it's uh, just a way for companies to steal your data, but I look at it as they're gonna get your data no matter what. So you might as well use the product if you like it. So this is a field view drive. It plugs into your ISO bus system on your tractor or your sprayer or your combine and it collects data and it Bluetooths to the iPad. So this is my planning map from yesterday. It's a map of the population. It'll track things like population, yield. Uh, when we have it in the corn planter, it tracks down pressure and ride and anything that the 2020 says, it'll show up on this map. And then we can put in the sprayer. It'll keep track of basically your application, your time, your date. If you have a data plan, it'll keep track of wind speed and all that stuff. And then we'll run in the combine and it'll make nice yield maps. And they're all in one program. They're all in one place. If you want to do some trials, some side-by-sides, it's really handy for that. So we really like climate. The only problem is we only have two of these drives and I need to get a third one because we have one in the corn planter. We need one in this tractor for planting beans and we need one in the sprayer all at the same time. So I got to move this one back and forth for now. All right. Auto, hearing protection. I'll pick my podcast. There you go. All right, let's rock and roll. plugged up so when I'm spraying beans I always back up in the corner and just spray some out right at the edge of the field because when we spray corn we use atrazine and atrazine gets stuck in the end of these boom caps it's kind of like chalky uh, gritty material it gets stuck in there and atrazine will kill beans so I always back up spray some out that'll kind of flush the boom out get that atrazine out of there and then I take off all right, now which one was it? I think it was this one. 
Yep. See that chunk? It's no good. Okay, now let's rock and roll. First field done. We're gonna start on the second field. There's just 40 acres here. Get my monitor set up. Next, 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 next. Okay, open now. Now I need to choose a field in here. Come on. Sometimes the climate gets frozen and you have to close the app and restart it. It's kind of annoying, but whatever. Should be good to go. Bumps on. Ready to go. back to the house and get some lunch, switch some equipment around, get something done. Before we get started doing anything else, I just hopped on the side-by-side. -side. I'm going to run down and check on Dad. He's in one of my strip-till corn on cornfields, and I just kind of want to see what kind of job that's doing. And the dog's following me. Got some spots right here where there's a little bit more trash on the row than I'd like to see. When I made these strips, I had a hard time clearing the strip of all the trash, and it's mainly because our corn head was so wore out and it just left the residue so long and it was really hard to deal with. But I'd say for the most part, like in through here, it looks really good. I don't know, it's a small field, uh, it's 24 acres. I really want to keep experimenting with strip till corn on corn. I see some potential with it, and I'd really like to be able to make it work. The only way to know if it's going to work is if you try it. Sometimes trying it takes a little bit of risk, but that's farming. So I know Dad says he's kind of having trouble keeping the planter on the strip. They do make the uh, passive, what do you call it, passive implement guidance, something like that. You, you put a GPS receiver on your planter, and it talks to the one with the planter, so they work in tandem to keep the, the planter where you need it to be but it looks like he's on the strip pretty good. So, I don't know. This is dad's new toy, by the way, Can-Am Defender. It's pretty sweet. Now I gotta put some beans in the air seeder. We got that box in the old black dually. I already got the fork switched over on the Kubota. I'm hoping that we can just hold the box up over the top of it, if we've got enough reach and just dump them in because I only need enough for three acres. And I don't really want to move everything around on the seed tender. Forgot. Apparently the handle got broke off of this door. Good thing it's got a right hand entry. Dad burnt a brush pile last week and the handle must have broke off. But anyways, we are gonna get some seed in the air seeder right now. farm where I just sprayed and I was three acres short on beans. We picked up some beans this morning. I 
can't remember if I explained all this or not, but I just got a little bit to finish up there, and then I'm gonna go take Dad's place in the planner. I got some kind of cool I need to show you on there, and we're playing in some strip tilled ground. I kind of want to run it a little bit on the strips. I haven't really gotten a chance to do that yet. So, that's what we're doing. We should have enough beans to finish this up, and I'll swap out with Dad. So you may be wondering why we're having such trouble getting this air seeder set. It's not a planter. A planter has a meter that grabs an individual seed, whether it's with a finger or with a vacuum, and it takes that individual seed and drops it in the ground. Whereas this air seeder, basically a drill, they call it a controlled spill, and that's really what it is. It's got rollers with paddles on them, and it just kind of lets the seed fall into the tube, and then it blows it out to the trench. Well, if you have different size seed, it's really hard to get it set if you don't really know what you're doing, which we don't. We haven't really figured this thing out yet. So the seed that we were running, the seed that we're planting now is pretty small. So it's going to plant more seeds based on just the size of them. With bigger seeds, it's not going to have as much room in that roller and it's not going to drop as many. Whereas the smaller seeds, you can fit more in there and will drop more. So these are just the things we have to get figured out. And we just kind of have to get ourselves in the mindset that this thing is not a planter. You can't just set it and forget it. That's why we're having so much trouble. So other than the whole not being able to figure out how to get this thing set, I really like the machine. It's doing a really nice job planting the beans. Uh, consistent depth. We put those copperhead spike closing wheels on them and they're doing an excellent job closing the furrow. We were able to decrease the down pressure on those because they don't bounce as much as the smooth ones that we had on it. And it's not really just mashing that furrow down, it's just gently closing it nicely, getting it firm, but not too firm. So it's a nice machine. It's kind of tight, compact, it's really nimble. You can back it into corners really easy. And I like the machine. It's just, we gotta figure out how to get it set. And I think if we're going to keep this thing around, we're probably going to spend the money to put a scale on it because that would really help us figure out how to get this thing set. Well, that was fun. It took me about 10 minutes. On to the next job. Too far. said to bring the starter tank this is our starter fertilizer it is we run 8.18.6 at five gallons to the acre with a pint of zinc in furrow that's what we got in there got the planter filled up we are planting corn except can't get my starter fertilizer to work. Dad shut the pump off when we filled it, and now I can't get any fertilizer. So I'm gonna stop when I get to the end, see what we got. starter but it just started working. Dad's thinking we have a flow meter issue. It, he said once in a while it'll just act up and you just kind of give it a minute to chill out and then it does fine for a while. Probably need to rebuild the flow meter or get a new one. I think that one's rebuildable but other than that going good. Precision planning stuff's working pretty good. We got air force on this planner so it's got airbags that control the down pressure 
and lift pressure. So it's active as it goes through the field. It senses the conditions, not really the conditions, it's just how much force is needed to get the seed at the right depth. And it will push down or pick up on the units as needed. So our soils are really variable. Um, we got some sand, we got some low bottoms that are a little heavier. So it's really nice for that. So far so good. I really like the strip till. Dad's thinking we need to go to implement guidance on the planter because he's having trouble staying on the strip. Like right now I'm kind of over on the edge of the strip. I think if we got some blocks in our three points so it didn't sway side to side so much, that would help a lot. That's something we can try. We don't have a whole lot of strip till left, so should be all right for this year. For the most part, it's on the strip though, so cleaning it off really nicely, doing a good job. So I really like strip till. I think it's awesome. So there's one of the tile holes that I dug up and fixed. Yeah, it's still full of water. So I ended up leaving it open because that tile is plugged somewhere and the water's not running. I know a guy who's got a locator thing. It's like a rod that you shove through there and it works with radio signals or something. I don't know how it works. You shove it in there and it'll kind of help you find where it's plugged at. So I figured I'd leave that open because if I fill it in, it's not going to do any good anyway. We're just going to farm around it for now. Hopefully I can get him out here before the corn comes up and he can figure this out and fix it and we can fill that in and we don't have to worry about it come harvest time. You may have noticed my shiny new hat. The guys over at Red E sent us four rows of these Pro Stitch closing wheels to test out. We currently run the Copperhead Burrow Cruisers, which are these right here. They are a little spikier than those ones. They sent them out to a bunch of people. You might have seen them on Instagram, but I think they're just trying to get the word out about them. So far, we like them. They have this blunt edge that doesn't like just stab the ground kind of like those Copperheads do, and it leaves it a little smoother. So you can see right here, where they've been running these four rows and then you get over into the copperheads and they're just a little bit more divots in the ground so a lot of our lighter ground what is that noise that's weird let me look into that real quick anyways like i was saying in some of our lighter ground we think those copperheads might be a little bit too aggressive and they might dry out the soil as opposed to like a smooth closing wheel but then you get in some of the strip till situations and you kind of need that aggressiveness to get in there so I think these pro stitch they're kind of a nice compromise they're they got the flat top the blunt flat top but they're also kind of spiked so a little bit of both um, I think they'll work really well in all different types of tillage situations thanks to the guys at Red E they seem like some really cool guys they're out of North Dakota and they seem like really nice guys to work with thanks for sending those out and we're anxious to see how they do in different situations. We'll let you know what we think. So when we bought this planter, it had Martin cast spike closing wheels that are really aggressive. Uh, this planter came from south of here in some heavier ground, so they might have worked well for them, but up here in our sand, we just knew they weren't gonna work. But we did want some sort of spike, just because we're doing a little bit more no-till, strip-till stuff. Uh, if we were all conventional tillage, we would just run either the smooth cast or the smooth rubber ones because they work fine for that. The copperheads seem like they weren't super aggressive and we like them. I still think in some lighter soils, they are a little bit too aggressive. So far, I really like these Pro Stitch. We might end up with a whole set of them, who knows? I gotta move a rock. This is where I cleaned up those trees in the last video. As you can see, there's still some more cleaning to do, but I kind of ran out of time and this rock is right in my outside strip and it's going to be a problem so we're going to move it that is a really flat rock i wonder if it was part of a foundation there's used to be a building site here there's an old crib that's fallen down and i know there's some foundations in those trees but i bet those are just limestone slabs and foundations they're all over out here here's another one I gotta come over here with a grapple bucket and pick up a bunch of these roots and kind of level that out. Make it look pretty. While I'm out here, I'm gonna see how much seed I got left. Hope I got enough. Oh yeah, there's quite a bit left. I'm over half done, so. I 
number six ran out of corn. I just got from here to the end and then one more pass. So hopefully we can get this done and not have to put any more corn in. myself just open them all up and check them all well I didn't do that and I didn't make it 10 feet and number 16 right now so I always think I can get away with it but then I'm like just check them all there's only 16 it's not that many just check them so I'll learn someday there's the end right there can we make it uh oh row one is getting really low I think we can make it We'll just turn that off. I don't want to look at that. And we made it. That's it for tonight. Now let me see if I can figure out how to fold this thing up. First, I can shut my back down, shut my fertilizer down, shut my Air Force down, idle my tractor down. We're done with this field. Had a fairly productive day. I got some spraying done, got some beans finished, and we planted, let's see, about 120 acres of corn. Not bad. Not a bad day. Not a bad day. All right, let's fold this thing up and head for home. Thanks for watching. See you guys on the next one.